Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of The Daily presented by EA Sports FIFA 12. It's Friday, October 7th. Here with Greg Lawless, I'm Nick Fershaw. Greg, before we get to the weekend's action, let's take a look back at a big game Thursday night. The Vancouver Whitecaps uh, getting their first win at BC Place. A 3-0 route over Real Salt Lake. What happened in this one? Well, Real Salt Lake obviously just didn't play very well for one, and Vancouver played very well. They were moving the ball well, they were getting lots of chances, and then a red card to Colin Warner on what I think is a questionable handball in the box. The Vancouver players didn't seem to think that at all. They immediately were calling for the red card and the penalty. They got it. Camilo Sanvezzo steps up, puts it away. That's 1-0. He gets another penalty later on. And then uh, Hassan Kalfana ends up finishing it at the end with a third beautiful goal. And uh, you know what? This was a very good Vancouver team on the night. Salt Lake, though, four losses in a row. Mm -hmm. Jason Christ said he was already nauseous about the three-game losing streak they were on. And then he ends up getting food poisoning and mm -hmm. sat upstairs in the box for this one so he didn't have to watch it from the sideline. Salt Lake really struggling right now. The cards stacked against RSL seemingly from the beginning in this one. They played without guys like Beckerman and Saborio yeah. and Espindola was on yellow card accumulation. So mm -hmm. a big loss for RSL up in Vancouver, but a big win for the Whitecaps up at BC Place. Uh, let's take a look at some of the games this weekend. One we want to mention, New England at home against San Jose. 7.30 p.m. Eastern on Match Day Live. Two teams that are out of the playoffs, but still I'm sure fans interested in that one. And then a big game in the nightcap, the Seattle Sounders at home. 10 p.m. Eastern on Match Day Live against the Philadelphia Union. A big one for both teams. Can Philly go to Seattle and get a win if the Sounders have a hangover from that Open Cup? Uh, they could, you know, but at the same time, Philly have done a lot of traveling. Don't forget mm -hmm. that they were last week at Chivas USA. They've come home then, now and then they have to fly back to the West Coast. The Union have never won in the Pacific time zone as a franchise. Seattle, on the other hand, obviously will have lots of confidence coming out of that U.S. Open Cup. They also know that they have two games to be played before the LA Galaxy play their next one. So if they win both of those, they're just a point behind the Galaxy. Ziggy Schmidt saying that would put a lot of pressure on LA in the race for the Supporter Shield. And by the way, that second game, it's against the San Jose Earthquakes at CenturyLink. Already supposedly 55,000 tickets sold for that one. Philadelphia, obviously a tough team defensively. We actually spoke to Ziggy Schmidt yesterday in extra time, Nick, and he was saying it's going to be a tough one. We know that, but he feels pretty confident about the way his team is playing. And for the Philadelphia Union, definitely stuck in the muck of that Eastern Conference yep. race, but quietly six games in a row unbeaten yep. for and, the Philadelphia And also, Union. don't forget, Farid Mondragon is back yep. in goal for Philadelphia, so that's a big boost to them from a defensive standpoint. So a big East-West uh, matchup there. There's also some international action we want to get to, and an interesting story here for the Canadian national team in action on Friday night down in St. Lucia, but there's been some problems with the equipment. <laughs> yeah. They went out to train and they found out that the goalposts of the goals they were supposed to use at uh, the Beau Séjour Cricket Oval were not up to FIFA standards. So they weren't able to do that. They had to make some makeshift uh, mini goals. And while officials from the St. Lucia Federation were welding new goals, hopefully to be ready for tonight's match. It's a World Cup qualifier right. we're talking about here. And they needed to make sure the goalposts were all set. Uh, like this is a game Canada should run over St. Lucia on this. And one other storyline to follow on this one, Dwayne De Rosario sitting on 18 goals for the Canadian national team. One more and he ties Dale Mitchell all time for 19. It'd be nice to see Dwayne De Rosario work his way into the yeah. Canadian record books. There's one other big game in international slate. It's the U.S. national team in action on Saturday night against Honduras. 6 p.m. Eastern on Fox Soccer. There's a uh, live chat here on MLSsoccer.com. They're down at Sun, Sun Life Stadium in Miami, Greg. Uh, we talked to Maurice Adu on the latest edition of Extra Time Radio. There's still some ambiguity there about what this lineup's going to look like. What do you expect? Well, I think that, you know, right now, I think he's going to look to solidify the guys in the back, especially. He's brought in Oguchi Onyewu. That will be the one guy I think he's really going to check out. I think that Klinsman loves Chandler. I mean, he knows what he gets from Torundolo, but it's, he wants to take a look at Chandler again. The questions are also in the midfield. Who plays there without Jose Francisco Torres? Who's the creative guy mm -hmm. in that midfield? Does he bring Dempsey in there? Does Maurice Adu play a more attacking role? Does Michael Bradley play that attacking role? I think that Klinsman loves having Beckerman in there as that sitting guy. But there's also a Jeff Lorenowitz. Would he maybe get a chance finally to solidify a spot in there as well? Lots of question marks. The biggest question mark, though, in all of this is a player maybe who's not in camp, Omar Gonzalez from the LA Galaxy. He, come, he came out the other day and said he would consider playing for Mexico, which I think is pretty interesting. It's a little comment. Klinsman shot back. Well, you know what? I can only bring 18 to 20 players in, and these are the guys I brought in to take a look at. A lot of people clamoring for Omar Gonzalez to yeah. be part of this group. Uh, there are some other MLSers, obviously, in this camp, and a couple guys 
guys up top people are curious about. Juan Agudelo mm. and uh, Teal Bunbury and Edson Buttle, the former MLS, are back in the mix. Can be curious to yep. see who plays up top as well. Again, that game is 6 p.m. Eastern on Fox Soccer and Univision, and you can catch a live chat right here on MLSsoccer.com. And you can download the latest edition of Extra Time Radio. We mentioned it. We talked to Siggy Schmidt of the Seattle Sounders and Maurice Edu. You can find that on iTunes and Buzzsprout. One last thing before we go. We're inching our way towards MLS Cup. November 20th out at the Home Depot Center in Carson, California. And El Jimador wants to get our fans there. You can log on to their Facebook page at facebook.com slash El Jimador. Click on the Your Rules, Your Shot tab, Greg. And you can submit a rule for the 100% real soccer fan. What's yours? Well, my one right now is that the 100% real soccer fan doesn't worry about the results for a U.S. national team friendly against Honduras in October of a game that just really doesn't make much of a difference other than to find out what's going on on the field with the players. Well, if you have uh, your role, go to uh, facebook.com slash El Jimador. That does it for us for all the latest uh, news and all the coverage of this weekend's game as well as the U.S. national team and Canada. Log on to MLSsoccer.com. <laughs>